go back to that very first time you pulled 300 kilos in the bar, go back to that first time you got a first PR that you're really happy with. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. That's the essence of, of Strongman. When I'm in the freest of my state, that's when it comes out of me, you know, that oh, I'm, I'm here, I'm lifting, and it's the most beautiful thing we can do. Like what we used to do when we were younger was we used to drive up about half an hour away and we used to go in the water with mum and mum really enjoyed swimming in the sea. And the grieving process, it was, it was really like, still now, like I cry every day pretty much. But when I'm in the water, like when I close my eyes, when the sun's out, like that's when I can connect with mum. It doesn't need to be a verbal, I'm not talking to her, I'm not but just feeling that energy between us, you know, I can feel that every day. Every morning, it's a test for me to come in here, to wake up early, to wake up 5, 5.30, whatever time it is. And even when I'm driving through, my head's telling me, oh, just stay in bed, it's nice and cosy. I think oh, I'll just have a coffee and I'll be fine. But this is like having all the coffees compressed into one in the whole world and the most intense feeling of being in here. We've got the sunshine, we've got other people here, we've got this absolutely amazing water on the beach. It's primal, it's what we're supposed to do in life. It's We're supposed to be in nature, we're supposed to immerse ourselves in nature, we're supposed to be strong mentally, physically and emotionally. And until we're that, until we're all those three things, we'll never be free. So that's why I love strength so much, because strength can set you free with the cold water, with being open with your emotions and this glorious world that we live in, it's absolutely amazing man and I am buzzing my little titties off I think one of my earliest memories of, of putting myself to the test of strength I think I must have been probably six, seven years old at the most and we were up the back from here at my my auntie's house, they had a farm there. We had a little, I think it was a birthday party. And there was a group of us, and I was like, oh, I bet I can lift this car. And you know, you tried to go under the wheel arch and try and lift it up, but you're just bouncing the suspension. And I thought I could lift up this car, and I thought, oh, I'm really strong. And none of the other guys could do it. Um, so in my head, I was strong then, you know, at kind of five or six years old. I used to do a lot of work in the garden with with my dad, with my granddad. So I used to test myself to see how heavy a stone I could pick up. And again, this was probably eight, nine years old. And I remember just loving that feeling of when it was too heavy, but oh, it was too heavy, but then you'd wait a minute and you'd come back and try it again. And being able to lift it just felt really, really nice for me. Um, so that was like my childhood. I was in the academy, secondary school or high school, whatever you call it. There was a physical education period where you could go to the gym. So I went into the gym the first time. The PE teacher um, said, you know, don't lift too much weight or whatever. And she kind of left us to it. So me and a few of the guys went down to the dumbbell rack and were just doing curls. And there was like a bench press machine. So again, it was like as much weight as we could, um, probably 80 kilos worth, if that. So I managed to like get one rep. You know, your red face red, bright red, and none of my friends could do it at that time. And I was like, geez, this is, this is pretty cool. It makes me feel, straight away it made me feel like I belonged there, because I was, I was good at something. When you're good at something, generally you feel like I belong, you belong there, you know? So for me, that was that kind of little ignition source to the, the big, big fire that's, that's, that's now burning in me now, you know? I knew what Strongman was, obviously, from being younger, watching it on TV, still watching it on the TV. But I thought these guys were like these behemoths. They're huge, and you know, I'm like, there's no way I could ever do that. No problem on the clean for either of them. As I was kind of progressing, I noticed my body getting bigger. I was getting stronger, and that again started to remind me of when I was working in the garden of you know being able to lift those stones with Dad and Grandpa and Opa, and you know. So for me, that was the 
the real changing point for me when I saw my body grow, saw, saw my lifts go up. And then, just by chance, there was a local competition on in Inverness, um, which was my first competition I've ever done. The deadlift shall rise. I think that was what it was called. I went down completely new to everything, didn't know what I was doing. It was 320 kilos I lifted on a stiff bar. And again, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I had a stringer vest on, a little gold gym belt on. There was like maybe 20 people watching. I was ripping my t-shirt off straight away. I was pumped, I was beating my chest. I was, you know, that, that, that performer was coming out of me. Ended up winning that show. And then that, for me, that was when it was like, right, this is, this is something I'm thinking about all the time. I'm excited. Everything just felt good. I felt alive. And from that day, it was strength. And Strongman was the only option for me from that day forward. The Highland of Lou I think my very, my very first Giants Live was back in Gateshead around 2013 and I hadn't done anything, like I'd never picked up a yoke, we didn't have a log in the gym, didn't have a set of stones, I was, I was really nervous going into it. I remember mum and dad in the crowd, <laughs> I think my dad said to someone in the crowd, I watch out for Luke, he's going to do well at this show, I think I came second last and it was pretty, it was, it was, it was amazing actually, it was, it was the most amazing thing because I never thought I'd ever get to that level, I'd never thought I'd be competing at a Giants live show, competing against Big Laws, Terry. There's still a video of me and Terry and I on the log press. I think it was 150 kilos. I got no reps on it. Um, deadlift, zero reps. Loading race. I remember there was a loading race into the back of a pickup. And I ended up loading myself into the back of the pickup as well, um, which was quite embarrassing. But it was, again, it was the... That little ember in me, you know, it was growing, 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 and being there was absolutely amazing. <sighs> Tom was a, a very gifted sports person, you know. When Tom was born, he was a big baby, you know, a big chunk. Um, he loved football, he loved tennis, golf, anything sports orientated. And, you know, we all saw that as, as a family, we saw that he was very gifted. Once he became, I don't know, five, six, seven, you know, we kind of noticed that there was maybe something a little bit um, special, you know, about Tom. You know, routine was a really th important thing to him. He couldn't be alone um, without mum. Uh, for very long, or if it was, it had to be a big plan and plan it, and if not, he'd, you know, take a bit of a, a bad turn. You know, so when Tom got diagnosed with autism, he was kind of eight, nine years old, it was really difficult. And you know, back then it was like, oh, my wee brother's got autism, and I don't really fully understand. And, you know, it is what it is, it doesn't really change the, the love or anything, you know, it doesn't matter if, if you've been diagnosed with anything. Everyone came together to kind of support Tom. And when Tom first came into the gym when he was 16, he, he'd wear his hoodie up, he had a hood up, and then his head was down the whole time. He wouldn't make eye contact with anyone, he wouldn't speak to anyone. He'd be kind of tied to me. You know, it was like I was the safety blanket and I was the, the person that made sure he was okay. And, but with, with me having to work away, I was away maybe three months at a time sometimes. Every time he'd come, I'd come back, he'd be bigger, stronger confident and that is the the power of again of strength it's not just physical it's physical emotional and mental that is the power of strength and without that without tom first going to the gym okay physical strength was there but then from that physical strength he then got mental strength and now he's got emotional strength as well so that's all come from that first time he's opened that door with me to go into the gym you know that was the the starting point, I guess, of whatever we are now, you know, it's the Stolten Brothers, or whatever this thing is we're doing, that was the start of it.
Tom gave me hope, you know, when he started to compete. That's what Tom gave me, and I haven't said that too much, but Tom gave me that hope that I was more than just a, an offshore worker. You know, that was my identity back then. And then when Tom started uh, to come on the scene and doing well, you know, I started to kind of talk about Tom and say, this is this is the future, you know. And I know I'm proud of Tom being here. He's uh, some, some true potential in Tom to, to challenge these boys in a couple of years. Tom, Tom was the bit of light that I needed. You know, when we started to do well, we, you know, winning Scotland's Strongest Man, been a little bit better at Giants Live, and we both made a podium. And I remember finishing second out in Dubai, and that's when I messaged Cushy and said, I'm not going offshore again. This is an opportunity, and opportunities don't often come around for you to, to do something really special and do something that you really love. I had to do myself justice and my mum as well for her memory, you know, I knew she would want me to be happy or do something I am passionate about. So I said to Tom, like I'm done offshore, I'm done working, let's let's try and do something. We had the YouTube channel up by then, um, we started um, doing merchandise and I was like, ah, I'm done. And stop and so quick, wow, 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 look at that performance. Lauren Shaw, quick, Stoltman, quicker. That, that moment when Tom won the first World Strongest Man back in Sacramento, it was almost like an outer body experience, you know, you kind of... <laughs> I love the part, and I watch it back, Tom loads the last stone, and he looks round to Brian Shaw, and he's like... And he, like, it's like in pure disbelief that he's done something like that. I mean, I know I'm very biased. That moment, I'll never... I'll never that you won't ever beat that for me, that world's strongest man. A boy that couldn't leave his room up until he was 14, 15 years old, diagnosed with autism. Um, could have given up so many times. The most uncomfortable thing in the world for him to, to speak to people, to get interviews in front of thousands of people, to lose his number one support in our mum in 2016. And for him to lose that and still come good. Like his story, Tom's story, a little autistic boy that grew up to become the strongest man in the world, not just once, but twice. Probably gonna be the best ever strong man in the world. Tom's unbelievable. He is the fucking strongest person I've ever seen. And I've been blessed to have seen so many strong men. Brian Soft, Thor, Eddie, Mitchell Hooper. Fuck them, it's Tom. Tom has got everything. And I don't mean that in any disrespect, because I love all those guys, but Tom is everything. What is strong? Tom Stoltman. That's what, that, for me, that's what I, I define strength as. Oh! What about that? What about that? Who is number one? Who is the world's strongest man? I think in my early, earlier competitions, I was a bit of a, yeah, just there for a bit of fun and didn't really... Oh, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to compete. I'm just, it's an honour to be here, and it still is. I, I had a, a friend that was a psychologist, clinical psychologist, Amy. I spoke to her, she said, oh, I think it'd benefit if Tom maybe spoke to you. She was like, yeah, definitely, definitely. That'd be so cool. Love to help him. Watched, obviously, a lot of your stuff, and I think we could do a lot of work. And then, like she said, she said to me, what about you? Would, would you want to speak? I'm like, well, I'm fine. What are you talking about, Amy? I'm sound. I'm just some idiot from the Highlands just trying to have a good time at these shows. And she said, well, look, the way you, you describe yourself as some dafty or some Highland idiot or some idiot from Invergordon or you're just here to have a bit of fun, like that's doing you a, it's like a negative, you're self-sabotaging. So it was very simple. The very first thing we did together, she said, right, look, you call yourself some idiot, some um, dafty from the Highlands and stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, well, I am. I'm just, I like to get a spray tan, go down, looking all orange for Giants Live and, you know, whatever. It's all about Tom and Tom's a boy and I just want him to be okay. And she said, well, let's let's start. So tell me why you're you're uh, an idiot from the Highlands. Why, why are you an idiot? Um, I was like, well, like... <sighs> and I was like, fucking hell, I don't know. Um, like, I'm actually pretty okay, you know, I've got a good job, I've got a house that I managed to build, I've got a gym, starting a business, competing professional strongman, competing world strongest man, I'm kind of not really an idiot, I'm a 
And she says, no, you're not a fucking idiot. You're good, you're successful, you've, you've managed to do things in life that, you know, other people would would give anything to do and, and that just like completely just went Whoa. like it was like I f went, just changed my mindset I was like Jesus so I was like so is it okay for me to say I'm not an idiot she said yes it's okay you can be okay without saying you're an idiot or downing yourself and I was like right okay I remember coming to Europe's Strongest Man 2021 and I just felt like a beast I just felt like an animal I felt like, like, like nothing would get. Like there was just no doubt in my mind that I was going to win, and that's one of the most powerful things I've felt. Like, I was, I'm going to win this show. I'm going to become Europe's strongest man. And like having that belief, you know, the having that pure self belief, and it wasn't arrogance. It wasn't cocky. It was like, I know, I know it's 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 my time. It's it's me. Tom's one world strongest man. It's my time, it's my time to, to do something. I spent my whole life doing that to myself, like downing myself, not allowing myself to be okay with who I am. I didn't know who I was, and I was always looking for something, oh, I should do this. I don't need that, I don't need that clarity, because if I'm this person today, I'm going to be someone else tomorrow. But for me, on that day, I was Europe's strongest man before I competed. That's what I felt like. The Highland of Blue Stone! In a very different frame of mind, the man from Scotland is ready to represent. You can hear the crowd will anymore. Stone knows this is critically important. On the way we go, and it is fire from the start. Both men driving that stall up. Tremendous battle. Both men so close. Edging the stall on Narmico, who is Europe's strongest man. Luke Stolman! Leaving a legacy doesn't have to be winning world's strongest man. It doesn't have to be Europe's strongest man. It doesn't have to be be hugely successful in everything you do. Our family has left a legacy in, in the form of our grandfathers, or our mum. Mum's left her legacy on us. Is our legacy that Tom's inspiring millions of people are kind of looking to him as, as the new Superman, you know, and, and that's, that's special. I still go back to that little Highland idiot when I start talking about things like that, because I think, well, who am I to leave a legacy? But then, I want my legacy if people think of me, I hope people think I'm, I'm, I'm a decent person. People say, you know, without, without me there wouldn't be a Tom. But Tom was the one that allowed me to achieve what I've done so far. <laughs>